Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today is part three of our crime series re-examination of the JFK evidence uh, that, that I had worked on for quite some time here. Now, uh, we've already talked about the events. We've talked about the evidence. Uh, we've talked about the findings of the evidence. Now we're going to talk about probably the most controversial uh, aspect of this case was the theory that came out as the magic bullet theory, that it was actually one round that hit both uh, President Kennedy and Governor Conley. A lot of the information in here that they found, it was found uh, back in uh, 1963 by the FBI when they did their examination. However, today using more modern uh, types of investigating means, Doppler radar, a high-speed camera, uh, you know, a, a lasers for measuring, has now given us a much better picture of what actually happened. There's somebody who I want to call out here because, uh, in my opinion, this gentleman has done some of the best work on the investigation of JFK. His name is Luke Haig, uh, out of Forensic Services in uh, in Arizona. Luke has been a forensic firearms examiner for more than 40 years. Uh, he has been probably one of the most distinguished members that our association has ever had. Uh, he has probably written more papers uh, on scientific research than anybody else that I know of. Uh, and he was uh, asked to re-examine it for a television show, Cold Case. And in Cold Case, him along with his son, Mike, who is also a forensic firearms examiner and also an instructor uh, from the Albuquerque uh, Crime Laboratory, they did some uh, experiments which basically proved what happened that day. Now, again, when you look at it, you look at the scientific method that was used. So when this is approached, this is approached from a scientific way. First, we have the observation. When we look at the uh, the evidence, you see JFK, you see the uh, projectile strike, you see him go forward. Then we see the second next shot, the head have the head come apart. So the observation was there was only two shots that were that impacted. Uh, that's all the evidence had showed. One was a miss. Now there are some people who have different claims of which one missed. Uh, I tend to believe it was the first shot that was missed uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I feel because of the obstruction from the tree that was in front of it and the location that the car was. Um, and I also tend to take the uh, the word of the Secret Service agent who was right there on the ground uh, when he heard that first shot and saw nothing, and then when he saw the second shot. So the question is, could this one bullet have gone through two people? So, you know, the hypothesis of both the FBI and Luke Hay was absolutely uh, it was possible. So now we have to figure out how. And there's a couple ways that we're going to do that. So scientifically, when you do something, it has to be repeatable for it to be accepted as fact. If you have something that happens at random, you can't say with a reasonable degree of scientific certainty. But the experiments that were done uh, to prove this were repeatable over, over, and over. And that makes what happened fact. So once you do your experiments, then you do your analysis. Do I have the same result is the observation that I had before. And in these cases, the conclusion was, yes, absolutely. So uh, Luke has been gracious enough to allow me to use uh, several of his videos so I can show you exactly what happened and I can show you uh, how all this happened. So we have a fact, there were three rounds that were fired. Uh, we did hear there was three reports. And uh, fact two, there were two rounds that actually struck. Uh, one struck the president, and then went through and to hit Governor Connolly. Then the second one was one that struck him in the head. The Zapruder film was perhaps one of the most important uh, pieces of evidence that we had in this. Abraham Zapruder was standing on a concrete block on the grassy knoll, and he was filming uh, the motorcade as it was coming through. He, even with even when the shot went off, he never budged. Uh, he was able to get the entire thing. It was, it was literally the best. There was some other film footage also, but uh, his was actually the best. Now, he basically had an old 8mm camera. Now, there's 26 seconds of film. It took snapshots every 1 18th of a second. So 30 frames equals 1.6 seconds. So as we see it, the first shot missed. Now, we, when you're looking at this Zapruder film, as we can see up here, the shot that struck Kennedy and Connolly, it was between a Z210 and Z, Z40. 30 frames, 1.6 seconds for one shot. Kennedy, at that point, had shown him grabbing his throat as, as, as he's coming down. At uh, Z44, Z45 is when he holds his hands up to his throat. Jackie is now facing him. Now, Conley, not until frame Z235 uh, and 237 did he show any kind of uh, any kind of feeling uh, that, that he had been struck. 
And then the third shot was the final headshot, Z313, which is where we can see the projectile hitting the back of Kennedy's head and we can see the explosion coming out the front. Now we're going to go back to the Warren report. Uh, Alan Spector, he was a Texas prosecutor who was asked to be on, on, the, uh, on, the, on the Warren Commission. He was the one who uh, came up with the idea of the single bullet theory. Now, an interesting aspect of this was, uh, Con was Governor Conley said that he was not hit by the same shot that hit uh, the president. Um, I think many people beg to differ with him on that uh, because of, of all the evidence. Now, many people who've been involved in combat or people who've been involved in shootings know that there's chance, there's times when you can continually shoot somebody and they still keep coming because they have delayed reaction to pain. They don't realize that they've been hit uh, until it catches up with them for the most part. And I believe, and I believe everybody else believed the same thing happened with Conley. As much as he insisted that wasn't it, we believe he had a delayed uh, feel. And you're going to hear that. You're going to see that by uh, the shape of the projectile that hit him. Uh, we're going to get into that. The bolt that struck Kennedy in the back uh, exited his throat. Uh, we know that came through, exited his throat. If you look at how Governor Conley was struck, it wasn't a straight bullet hole. It was yawed. The bullet hit sideways. Now, in order for a bullet to hit so sideways, something has to obscure it. Something has to knock it off its, its axis uh, that, that's going to cause it to, to move. So the bullet was unstable at the point where it hit uh, Conley. That completely eliminates the possibility of that being a single shot. Because if it was a single shot, it would have been a, a round hole going inward. So there's a couple ways that uh, this was able to be proven. The first one that was done by Luke Hague is we wanted to find out is it actually possible for this 6.5 Carcano bullet to go through two people? And there was a test that, that Luke did. And we're going to be seeing this video that's going to be showing him shooting through pine boards. Now, the ammunition that he chose was the exact same lot of ammunition, the WCC uh, ammunition. Now, one of the things that's very interesting about this rifle is the way the bullet is compared to most. If you look at the 6.5 Carcano projectile, it is a long cylindrical tube. You have a very small shoulder where the bullet comes to a round edge, which means that bullet is catching that, that rifling almost its entire direction. What that does is it keeps that bullet extremely stable. And when it leaves, it makes it much more increasingly stable so it's able to penetrate much deeper. If you look at a standard rifle, the rifling is only gripping the last half to a quarter inch. So when that bullet's going down the barrel, the center of gravity on that allows it to spin a little bit. So it gives you a little bit less penetration, but due to the fact that it was this flying cylinder that had uh, this rifling imparted on it, the stability was incredible. So now as we see, he fired the Carcano bullet into the boards. So the projectile from the, from the 6.5 Carcano rifle went through nearly three feet or 36 inches of that wood. And it was stable and it, it was undamaged. So the conclusions that, that Luke came to, Extremely stable, projectile strong and undeformed, and it's definitely capable of going through two people. So the next test is, as we see with Governor Conley's wound, the, the bullet shape was, it was elliptical in shape. So again, that bullet would have to have been in a yaw when it, when it, when it struck him. So as the bullet came through Kennedy's throat, the bullet, once it got into the, uh, the, the, the flesh, when it exited his throat, it began to yaw. So when it hit Governor uh, Conley, it was sideways. Now, when a bullet goes sideways, it has it slows down and it has much more destructive force in a larger area than it does when it's going straight, which allowed that to plow through his chest, go through uh, to go through uh, where his, his right nipple was, and then uh, go through his bone. As we can see from the X-ray of the bone, it just pushed right through. And then as it went through uh, his, his wrist, it lodged in his uh, left leg. So, well, how do we prove this? Now, this was a, an excellent test that was done by Luke that basically showed the temporary and permanent wound cavities. But it also showed how a projectile will yaw. So the first test that Luke had done was with, a, uh, was with ordnance gel. Ordnance gel basically simulates human tissue. Uh, we're basically mostly water. So when the bullet strikes, it's the same type of mass as, as muscle. It shows the bullet going through, and it shows uh, what, the, uh, what the permanent wound would look like, the damaged tissue. But when it expands, it comes right back down like normal tissue does. So we're going to watch that right now. So as you can see, what Luke saw here was 
as soon as the projectile with the high speed footage, as soon as the projectile left the ordnance gel, it struck the witness board that was exactly the same distance that uh, Kennedy was from Conley, and it struck sideways, which duplicated exactly the wound that was on the back on, on the back of uh, Governor Conley. So. Luke and uh, Mike tested that over and over and over, getting the exact same result. When it would go through that, that uh, ordnance gel, the bullet would yaw, and it's, it's completely uh, consistent with both the wound on uh, Connelly's coat, his back, you know, his main wound, and it explains the destructive force of that bullet hitting sideways when it would when it barreled through the flesh. The next test that he did was what's referred to as MBM soap, or it's a... It's a it's a basically a type of a soap that, unlike ballistic gelatin, this does not expand back down. So what you're seeing is the temporary cavity and, and what it's doing. So it's very much like, like Luke says, it's like Neutrogena soap. So what we're going to see now is Luke doing the testing on the ballistic media, uh, the ballistic soap. As we can see from what he found, after he cut it, you're able to see that the bullet was straight and then it began to yaw. And then the high-speed video, you saw that it also hit sideways. So we were able to find, and he was able to prove scientifically without any re, without any reasonable doubt, uh, and you know, and beyond the scientific certainty, is that when a bullet strikes flesh type material, it becomes unstable and it will yaw. Perfectly explaining scientifically how the governor got that, that's that shape of a, of a wound and that type of damage from a one bullet. Now looking at Connolly's, uh, X-rays, you can see there's a, there's a vast amount of damage that's that's in that wound channel. And again, you're looking at a bolt that's that's you know damn near uh, three quarters of an inch long, versus a projectile that's six you know six point five or 0.275 inches in diameter. By a bullet hitting sideways, is how you were to see all the destruction um, versus a head-on shot. And then again, that proves the fact that there was not a third shot that was hit. It was one shot that hit Kennedy and Conley. Now the base of C three hundred nine was uh, was was sort of crushed in or kidney bean shaped in, if you would, uh, when we looked at it earlier. As we can see from the picture right now, we're going to be able to see that in the bottom. You can see that there's some of that uh, lead was squeezed out, and again, I believe that that was the lead the fragments that were found um, in Conley's wrist was from that bullet just squeezing as it was hitting uh, that bone. Now the findings that uh, that Luke and Mike he came up with verified everything that was done back in 1963 by the FBI, but it did it in a way that uh, we can see it now and understand it uh, more uh, than than we could back then. We can just see it more visually. Now again, this is forensics and ballistics. This is very different from somebody who's a deer hunter who shoots his deer. Uh, this is very different when you're dealing with a human body versus another animal. Next thing we're beginning into a part four is going to be the headshot. The headshot was probably one of the more was very interesting in itself because people wanted to claim that his head went back into the left, which means he had to be hit from the front. We're going to delve into that part in part four. Stay tuned.